Yeah, it feels like we're we're starting a whole new season here yet again. Um, feels good to get back out here to practice on the floor and have our uh, have our guys all back together. Um, obviously, you know we got a big challenge with UConn on Saturday. Uh, they're tough. They're physical. Um, you know, Coach Hurley does a tremendous job. They're one of the better defensive teams in the entire country. I know they're the number one ranked defense in the Big East. Um, they're big. They're strong. They're tough. Uh, they're one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country as well. I think they're uh, top five in the country in offensive rebounding percentage. Uh, so we, we got our hands full. You know, we got to be able to keep those guys off the glass. We got to be able to handle their ball pressure, um, take care of the ball. And then, you know, obviously the, uh, the elephant in the room is, do we, is James uh, uh, Boot Knight playing or not playing? We don't know. We're going to prepare like he is. Um, I know he's day to day. Um, for them, so I wouldn't be surprised if he plays. Like I said, we're going to prepare for that. Um, but they got a lot of talented guys on their team. Um, they're deep, and like I said, they're big and athletic. So we're, we're just excited that we're able to get back out here and play. And uh, I know our guys are, are tired of being in their rooms. Hey, Travis, do you know if you'll still have any players in COVID-19 protocol for Saturday's game? Yes, we will. Next question. I'm sure Adam has a follow-up. Um, you know, th this being the third time that you guys have to sort of restart after a, a break, why do you think that your team has seemingly handled it so well when I think you look around the country and it's kind of a coin flip almost how, how teams are going to come out of a break and how they're going to respond to that. And you guys have seemingly handled it pretty well. Why do you think that is? You know, Adam, I think it's probably for a couple different reasons, but you know, I, I think number one, we have good leadership, um, Amongst our guys, you know, our, with our with our captains Zach Fremantle, uh, Jason Carter, and Paul Scruggs, and we try to keep our guys engaged during uh, the pause, right? You know, while, while we're all on break, I guess. Um, you know, we try to keep them engaged, keep them together, keep it light, um, keep it kind of fun, even though it's not fun, right? Sitting out and watching all these other games. Um, you know, I, I think the other thing that probably bodes well for us is we've kept our system. Uh, both defensively and offensively, very, very simple uh, this year. Uh, we're not over com overly complicated. It's more about us, less about our opponent. Um, you know, we're more focused on getting our win back, making sure our guys are in shape, making sure that uh, our guys are, uh, are, are we're tight with our defensive and offensive system, with our execution. Um, and we, again, we've probably been somewhat fortunate too, Adam. Again, I, but I think you can look at it as a glass half full and say, you know, our guys should be mentally and physically uh, very fresh. Uh, you know, we haven't been doing all this crazy travel all across the country and, and practicing, you know, banging on each other. We've been, you know, our guys should be fully rested and, uh, and ready to go. I know that on Saturday. Next question. Joe Clark. Uh, Coach, you're just looking at your schedule. There's obviously not a ton of games left. Um, just in general, is there any consideration into rescheduling, maybe even a non-conference within the next few weeks? Joe, that's a great question. Um, yeah, I, I, yes is the answer. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out. Obviously, you know, if we could get Big East games in, Joe, I think that would be the uh, the preference, right? Because um, we've missed several Big East games, and we always want to. Uh, Try to try to do right by our league first, um, but if that can't happen, then we are definitely going to look um, elsewhere. You know, to non-conference, uh, some you know non-conference games, and you know we'll be re very selective um, on who we would play. Right, we we want we want to give our guys opportunities uh, to help our resume for the NCAA tournament. Um, 
we've put ourselves in a decent position so far this year, even though we've been on, had so many games postponed and canceled. Uh, but we want to have quad one, quad two opportunities for our guys. And if we can get those opportunities, then we'll definitely uh, see if we can make those work out within our schedule. Next question, Andy Mack. Uh, Travis, the uh, UConn seems to play at a, a slower tempo. Are you going to be able to speed them up? Is that part of your game plan to get them to play faster? You know, Andy, they, they do. They, they play very methodical, uh, slow. They want to play in the 60s. They want to keep the game in the 60s. Um, that, that's advantaged them. We got to try to get out and go. We got to push the pace. Um, you know, I, we, we have to uh, get them. They, they run a lot of set plays. <laughs> Uh, probably more than any team in our conference. And, and the set plays are, they're almost like masking set plays, Andy. Like they, they're, they're movement plays and then to get to something. It takes them about 15 seconds to get to what they really want to get to. And uh, they do a great job of it. And they execute their stuff really, really well. Um, they got very good guard play. Uh, you know, RJ Cole is a veteran guard, uh, point guard, and, and he's a high level player. So. You know, they, they, uh, they run their stuff well. So we got to try to get the game up into the 70s and 80s. You know, that, that would be advantage Xavier. Um, but again, that, that's going to be a, uh, it's going to be a clashing almost style as far as this time of possession goes. Next question, Adam. Travis, in terms of returning to, to practice in advance of this game, is today the first day that you guys have been back together as a team practicing, or were you able to do some like individual stuff yesterday? How did how did that work? Yes, yeah, so we were we were able to do small group stuff yesterday, um, which was nice just to kind of see our guys and uh, be around them. Um, then we'll be able to go full go today, um, compete, contact the whole deal. Um, so everybody that will be able to play in the game on Saturday will be available to practice today. So which is nice. Next question, Andy. Oh, Andy, I think you're on mute. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll get the hang of this sooner or later, maybe in 2022. Uh, <laughs> they got a bunch of uh, shot blockers. They're fairly deep uh, among their big guys. Uh, is it going to be a shock to your big system now, having not really done a lot of contact stuff to, to, to get thrown into the deep end? You know, they do. They got, they, got a, uh, they got a really athletic front court. They're big. They're strong. Uh, they're the number one shot blocking team in our league. Uh, you know, it's not just our bigs, Andy. You know, it's also going to be our guards, right, when they drive the ball. Like they, they, they are really good. UConn's really good on the ball, and they are really good off the ball, like weak side defense. They're going to come over and help. They're going to help the helper. Um, they do a great job protecting the rim and making you take tough shots, right, contested shots. And we have to use that, ag uh, that aggressiveness against them. You know, we do. And, and uh, if you're going to go in there and finish, you better get your body on them uh, and go right through their chin or else you better try to land on two, kick out, see opposite, you know, drop off to your teammates. I think we got to use their aggressiveness against them. But they are – it's, it's one of the reasons why they're such a good defensive team. I mean, you got Whaley and Sonogo and, and all these guys, Carlton, that are 6'10", 6'9", long athletic guys that can block shots, man, and protect the rim. It allows their guards to be really aggressive on the ball because of that, uh, that shot-blocking presence that they have around the rim. Next question, Adam. Travis, I'm sure that you've already been asked this before this season, and you've probably answered it uh, a few times. But when you're in a situation where your team can't practice, your team can't play games, how how uncomfortable is that for you as a coach to not be able to do this thing that you love? Like, do you have to unplug from this and? and you know, maybe try to do something else, do a, take up a hobby, or like how, how have you handled this personally when you can't do this the way that you would like? Yeah, I mean, it's frustrating. Uh, it, it definitely is. You want to be out there on the floor. You want to be with your team. Uh, you want to see them get better, right? You know, and that, that's been probably uh, the biggest frustration for me is, you know, you can't really see your team grow. 
like it like it usually does, and it needs to, right? Especially with the teams <laughs> that are in our league. Uh, you know, so it's frustrating. But for me, you know, I, I haven't really picked up another hobby or anything. Uh, you know, I try to spend a lot of time, uh, you know, with my family uh, as much as I can. Um, but I also just watch film, you know. So, like, uh, for example, Adam, like, if if I think we're playing DePaul, I'm going to watch DePaul all the way up until Doc and, and Mario Mercurio and Dave Fluker say, hey, nope. And then what I do to DePaul, I take the stack of stuff that I have. I keep my notes. I just get rid of all the st I stack of the papers that I have, though, and, and on all the stats and all that stuff. I dump it in the trash can. I move right to UConn. Do the same thing. I'm going to work on UConn until somebody tells me to stop. Um, you know, I think it's allowed us to have great familiarity with our league and with our opponents, maybe even more so than normal, um, just because usually you're going game, 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 game. Uh, that, you know, for the head coach, that's why you usually have an assistant coach uh, that's uh, assigned to each team, right? They do the scouts. They alternate scouts. I've been able to do a lot more uh, this year than normal just because we've been on pause a couple different times. So I have even better familiarity with the teams that we're playing. So that's been my hobby. It's been Big East basketball. Next question, Andy. Uh, Travis, how, how crazy is this schedule potentially going to get down the stretch? You've only played six games in the league. I mean, are, are we looking at the back-to-backs or three games or four games in a week, uh, potentially? Yeah, I, I don't know yet, Andy. Uh, you know, we would like to get in as many games as we possibly can. Uh, while at the same time putting our team in a good position. What I don't want to do is, is overschedule and hurt, hurt our team, right? I think that, would be, uh, that wouldn't be very smart. Um, but at the same time, if we can, like I said, if we can get some opportunities where we can get some quad one, uh, quad two opportunities, and we're all for it. Um, I don't want to have to travel like all the way across the country, you know, out to LA or, or wherever. Um, especially if we have like quick one day turns, right? If we have two days later, we're playing, playing another game. It's, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense for us. Um, I want to make sure we do, we can do as well as we can with the games that we have that are currently on the schedule, but we'll do what we need to do. You know, if we feel like we need to get more games in, then we're going to get more games in. And our, our goal is to obviously make the NCAA tournament. Um, and, you know, we, we've, we've, we've done a pretty good job to this point. We need more games. We understand that. But we have a lot more opportunities coming up here, especially as long as we stay healthy. Next question, Adam. Last time you guys played UConn, it wasn't all that long ago, uh, just last season down in Charleston. Um, did you get a chance to rewatch that game? And, you know, what do you what do you remember about that game that, that might be able to help your guys in this one? I know it was kind of a crazy. Uh... Man. Yeah, that was that was a crazy game. It was a, uh, you know, number one, it's like I, I think they are the most physical team in the Big East. And that's what that's what they were last year. I mean, it was like a street fight out there on the court. Um, I mean, they grab, hold, physical, uh, they foul you. Uh, they, they rebound, they're tough. It's hard to score against them. I mean, they, they, they're really good defensively, uh, they're well coached. And I, you know, so I did get a chance to watch it. You get to relive those moments. And you, and you can remember, I remember all, it seems like yesterday that we played them. Um, you know, we obviously had some foul trouble in that game as well. Uh, they did, and, and we did as well. Um, but we had some guys step up. Bryce Moore uh, really stepped up, so did Damir Bishop. Uh, really stepped up in that game, especially when we were uh, we were a little bit uh, held hostage with our roster just because of all the foul trouble that we had. Um, Zach had made some some big time plays for a freshman, a couple big time blocks. I don't know if you again. I always again I just watched it the other day, but I always remember the block that he had. Then he ran the floor really hard and got a layup. Um, you know, just you know, again, it was a highly highly competitive game. You know, and that's the way they make it, man. And it's great having them back in the league. I, it, they're a great brand. Uh, they've won national titles. They've had several guys go to the NBA. they got a terrific coach and Coach Hurley. Um, it's going to be a great game on Saturday. I know I, we, our guys, it's like I keep on telling them, we, we, we better be ready from the tip. Because I'm going to tell you, UConn is definitely going to be ready. One last question from Andy. Uh, uh, Travis, do you have a magic number of uh... – of wins you want to get to uh, before you get to New York or games played or do you have any any targets in that area or is it just 
like uh, unrealistic to even plan that way. You know, we we want to win them all, Andy. Uh, I, I want to be uh, I want to win out if we can. Uh, you know, that'd be my preference. But I, I don't know. It just depends, obviously, how many games you can get in. I mean, like I. You know, to me, it's, you know, when you're talking specifically in, in regards to maybe the NCAA tournament, you know, they're going to look at what bad losses do you have, right? When I say bad losses, I'm talking quad fours, quad threes, and then and then what quality, who have you beaten, right? Like, what, what's your record versus quad one, quad two? And, uh, you know, like, we, we got some great opportunities coming up. I know that with UConn, uh, with St. John's. I, I, again, I don't even know who's past that. Uh, on our schedule, but like we're, we're going to have other great opportunities. So, um, you know, it, it's just about uh, about getting better for us. I just I'm just excited to get back out here and practice, play a few games because that's the only way you can get better, man. You got to be able to play and uh, and figure out our team because I, I don't think we're anywhere near our ceiling and haven't been for a long time all season really. Uh, I'm just hopefully we can get a get a few weeks in here uh, the rest of the way uh, without any interruptions.